Hello, my name is Amy Chelsea Risley, and I am currently a second semester graduate student in Sungyunwan University's Department of Media and Communication. I'm currently uh, in pursuing my master's degree. I can be contacted at amyrisley at g.skku.edu. And the research that I will be presenting for this conference is discrimination in the news, the influence of framing and anger on participation in online social movements. The structure of the presentation is as follows. Firstly, an introduction before I provide an outline of the theoretical background regarding framing theory, anger and framing, and also anger and civil participation before going on to discuss the hypotheses. After that, we will then go into the methodology and future implications as this is research that has not begun quite yet. Um, to begin, in 2018, more than half of Americans, according to the Pew Research Center, were civically, act civi civilly active on social media, at a, which came to, comes to a total of 53% of Americans. Previous research into the effect of news exposure on activism and civil participation, such as Smith's uh, 2020 research, showed that there were direct effects for news exposures on activism intentions. However, most research into this um, tends to focus on racial discrimination only. Therefore, this research plans to take a focus on gender discrimination. Um, this is due to the rise of gender discrimination social movements, which have uh, gained prominence online, such as uh, the me Too movement, which was mentioned on Twitter 19 million times between October 2017 and September 2018. So 19 million times within the space of less than one year. And also um, other social media, me social movements such as the Not All Men movement, um, which gained traction in England in 2021 after the kidnapping and murder of a woman who was on her way home after uh, being at a friend's house. Therefore, the goals of this research are to explore the relationship between gender discrimination frames and anger. Also the, the relationship between anger and online social movement participation. And finally, explore the influence of self-efficacy on the relationship between anger and online social movement participation. Um, so regarding uh, theoretical backgrounds, I will firstly start off with the framing theory. The earliest definition of frames was given by Goffman in 1974, who defined them as being, uh, who defined frames as, um, being used to organize pieces of information or experiences which would have otherwise been meaningless in a way that is contextual and understandable. Um, in the context of the news, uh, it is news content that provides context and presents what the issue or the problem is by using selection, emphasis, exclusion, and elaboration this can also be through the use of words and phrases, uh, contextual references, visuals, similes, or similes and metaphors, or common narrative structures, and even the tone of um, the news content. So in short, the media tells us not only what to think, but also how to think about it and what to think. So how do the frames influence how audiences think and act? Well, audiences are dependent on news media for information on topics such as social and political issues. Um, so therefore, the news frames, according to Entman, can strongly influence the audience's reaction to communication. As such, 
Opinions are formed by frames in the media, but it is also important to note that audiences uh, may already possess individual frames that could influence their opinions about the topic. As such, this research defines frames as news content that is presented in a certain light that can influence the receivers of the content. <laughs> um, with anger and framing, Nabi and Averill respectively noted that anger can serve as a constructive and motivating emotion. And also, um, according to Solomon, definition, um, it is an emotion that is inherently associated with the perception of injustice. With anger being a motivating emotion that can make people want to address the source of their anger, they're also known as the uh, injustice. Uh, it can explain the rise of social movements amongst um, oppressed groups, such as civil rights movement or the women's liberation movement as the perceptions of injustice can be powerful and widespread amongst that group. In the context of framing, Smith's 2020 study found that the exposure to explicitly framed mediated racial discrimination uh, frames um, marginally impacted anger. And it is on this basis that this research would argue that exposure to gender discrimination frames would lead to higher levels of anger compared to those who are not exposed. Anger is also defined as a strong motivator for pro-social behaviors. Um, pro-social behaviors include activities such as volunteering for an organization or serving as an officer in a political organization amongst many other things. Nabi notes that it can differentially affect information accessibility, desired information seeking, um, and policy preference, so these can also be in line with, with the schema development. Pro-social behaviours uh, stemming from anger can contribute to policy change and can also help to remedy injustice, therefore addressing the anger sources. In 2007, Turner proposed the anger activist model. The anger activist model suggests that anger may motivate activism, provided that the person also possesses efficacy for remedying the problem. To put it more clearly, high amounts of anger stemming from a message and the accompanying feelings of efficacy predict activist behavior. In short, if a person believes that they have the ability and capacity to take part, anger will motivate activism. As a result, this research would also argue that anger will bridge the relationship between exposure to gender discrimination frames and reported intent to participate in online social movements, and that self-efficacy will play a part in the relationship between anger and reported participation intentions. Um, therefore, this research would seek to explore these hypotheses. Hypothesis 1A, Participants exposed to implicit gender discrimination frames will report higher levels of anger than those who are not exposed. Then hypothesis 1b, participants exposed to explicit gender discrimination frames will report higher levels of anger than those who are not exposed. Hypothesis 2a uh, suggests that anger will facilitate the relationship between exposure to implicit gender discrimination frames and reported social movement participation intentions. Then with hypothesis 2b, uh, the anger will facilitate the relationship between exposure to explicit, uh, explicit gender discrimination frames and reported social movement participation intentions. Whereas finally, hypothesis 3 suggests that self-efficacy will facilitate the relationship between anger and reported social movement participation intentions. Um, here is also a proposed research model, and um, it is based off of the previous research mentioned by Smith, like um, Smith et al's 2020 research into uh, racism discrimination frames. So next I will discuss the methodology, methodology for this research. Um, Nabi's 2003 study and Smith et al's 2002 20 research provides the framework for conducting this research and 
This research would also build off of what they have found in their studies. The research would be conducted through a survey of 150 to 200, possibly even more participants, who are shown stimuli that consists of articles compiled from real news stories with four different experimental conditions. No exposure, no discrimination, so the control. Implicit gender discrimination, for example, uh, focusing on a male's male politician's achievements while highlighting a female politician's clothing or her role as a mo mother or a wife, basically things that a person may not straight away consider or realize as discrimination. And explicit, the final uh, experimental condition being explicit gender discrimination frames, which is could include stuff such as uh, blaming of a female sexual assault victim, or opinions that suggest that women are less capable or less equal to men. The measures would consist of anger, self-efficacy, and participation intentions. The, participa part the participants would be randomly assigned to a condition and would be given summaries and headlines um, of the articles that they will then have to decide which ones they would like to read. They would then be able to read the full article and after reading it, would be asked to answer questions related to the measures. Anger would be measured by indication of the amount of anger that the participants feel at that moment using the positive and negative effect schedule by Watson and Clark. Whilst efficacy would be measured by agreements to statements such as I can reduce discrimination or I can fight against social problems, as adapted from group efficacy measures previously done by von Zemmerin et al. in 2011. Measure of participation intentions would be conducted by measuring the indicated possibility of engaging in social movement activities, such as sharing posts to social media stories or uh, participating in online discussion forums within the next six months. Um, this would be done through the activism orientation scale uh, by Corning and Myers, which would be adapted to fit the researchers focus on activism and social participation, social movement participation on social media. Indications would be measured via Likert scales of one to five, and the data would be analyzed with a multiple linear regression analysis. Um, so the future implications of this research would be that it could contribute to further exploration of gender discrimination in the news and the implications that frames and emotions have on social media uh, participation or social online social um, movement participation, particularly in regards to how participants may react differently to discrimination against men and women and the effect of possible gender biases. Um, most of the social movements about gender discrimination focuses on the discrimination and issues surrounding the treatment of women and women's issues and women's rights. But there have been a growing uh, awareness about the issues that men experience that could possibly in, be interesting to explore and see whether the results would be similar. Additionally, this could provide a further basis uh, for research into cultural differences in the effects of discrimination framing and activism intentions due to cultural, uh, cultural differences in what is considered discrimination and also possible political influences. For example, uh, participants in one country may consider a type of behavior to be discrimination or a certain idea to be discrimination, whilst in another country, the same thing is considered to be an expected and normal part of life. Research into other frames of other types of discrimination, sorry, could be considered. For example, Smith et al. Uh, original study uh, looked into the uh, framing of discrimination against Black African Americans, um, but this research could also be applied to racism of other ra against other um, minorities, such as Latino pe people from Latin America or Asians, um, which could possibly be interesting, especially in the light of the unfortunate rising of 
Asian hate crimes during the coronavirus pandemic, and also um, different types of discrimination, including religious discrimination, such as Islamophobia or possibly anti-Semitism as well. Um, it could also contribute to further exploration of other effects, um, of other possible effects on social, online social movements, such as perceived peer pressure to participate. So what I mean by this is, are people participating because they actually care and want to help um, towards the cause? Or is it simply um, because of the rise of issues such as uh, online cancel culture on the internet that may make people feel like they have to show support for a cause simply so that they won't get judged by their friends or their acquaintances or even simply just their followers online. Another thing that could be interesting to explore um, that this research could possibly um, form a basis for is the influence of other emotions that aren't anger, such as the influence of frustration or sadness on um, on anger or any other emotion and how that would impact the intent to take part in online social movements. Also, um, the different sources of media, such as, for example, um, would discrimination seen in TV shows or films also have an influence on the intentions on partaking in social media movements or online social movements. This therefore could lead to a better understanding of why people choose to take part in social movements online. Um, and this could also not only highlight the positive impact on society of people um, becoming more active in social online, mo online social me movements against social issues, but could also possibly uh, highlight the negative influences that may not yet have been considered, such as peer pressure and so forth. Um, so this concludes my presentation. Um, I do have references included after this, this slide, but um, I'm sure you'll be able to see it um, through, the present, through the PPT file. Um, Thank you for listening and uh, please do feel free to contact me with any questions you may have um, as this research is very much still in the conceptual stages and it would most definitely would have some room to build on and things to improve on. So thank you very much once again for listening to my presentation. Thank you.